Beginning Thursday last week, with the reporting of the second fiscal quarter of Disney's earnings and a disappointing uh, streaming figure, uh, then, just in the last 24 hours, huge news from AT&T and CEO John Stankey reporting that the Warner Media Group, a subsidiary of AT&T for the last few years, will indeed be spun off and then merged with Discovery. We're going to get into it right now. Oh, man, this is a bunch of stuff. This is, you know, I was out uh, a lot of last week. Uh, every evening that I had, including the entire weekend, I was wrapped up in some uh, secondary work projects. And uh, finally, just getting a little bit of time here to squeeze a video in. I'm getting to that point now on YouTube where I feel like if I haven't made a video in a week, I'm, I'm something wrong with me. But uh, here I am. I may still be a little scarce for the next week or two until things start to smooth down a little bit more. But I had to get in here and get in on this. And obviously on this channel, we don't do a lot of business news. Uh, this is not kind of the channel for that. But when that business news does play a role in entertainment news and in pop culture news, which is what we do talk about here, I've got to bring it up. So I've got to put on that financial industry professional hat for a minute. Look at this from a business standpoint. And again, these are all my personal opinions based on some professional experience, as well as looking at it for, as a standpoint from, you know, for a fan uh, of, of, of some of the Warner projects and some of the Disney projects and things like that, at least historically, talking about Marvel, talking about the DCEU, uh, talking about Star Wars and Lucasfilm and things like that. That's what we do here at Valiant Renegade. But this is something that, that, that needs to be addressed because all of this is going to have a bearing of some sort one way or the other. So let's start with Disney. So last week, uh, Thursday afternoon after the market closed, Disney reported their financials. And, you know, these days when it comes to these big media companies, it's all about subscriber growth for streaming services. That is what everybody wants to look at. That's what the analysts and the stockholders, that's what everybody wants to look at from these guys nowadays. And Disney's numbers, while they did show growth, the problem was they were still a bit of a disappointment, which is as I had predicted that at least for this quarter, this was going to be a bit soft. And I think we all know the reason why. Uh, Disney, I dis, you know, they probably lost a lot of subscribers since the close of Mando Season 2. WandaVision was, let's face it, uh, rather disappointing. And Falcon and the Winter Soldier really kind of blew up the MCU fan base. That was the last straw, I think, for a lot of people. And a lot of people were very unhappy with it. What I found interesting was, or I shouldn't say interesting, I should say um, kind of funny because it's exactly the verbiage of the sort of verbiage that I would have expected from somebody like Bob Chapek on that call. Uh, and that was that WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier were, quote, well received. By whom, sir? <laughs> And that was my question. By whom? Uh, certainly not very well received by the fans. I think what he was going after was it was well received by Hollywood critics. Uh, and that's to no surprise because the more, quote unquote, woke that you're going to get in these things, the happier you're going to make uh, the, the, the Hollywood critic. Uh, and we see this kind of divergence and dichotomy all the time. If you look at places like Rotten Tomatoes, where you have... Uh, a critic score of 90 and you have an audience score of 40. So, you know, this is another one of those times. He did not say that they were the most viewed thing ever on Disney Plus. They didn't. He, I don't even think he discussed the viewership numbers um, on Disney Plus, probably because they were not anything that that was worth reporting. And the telltale sign, of course, was the subpar subscriber growth. Disney has a very big goal of 250 to 260 million worldwide total subscribers by 2020. I think 2024 is their goal. Um, that's a tall ladder to climb between now and, the, now and then. And it seems at this point, if subscriber growth may have, have kind of crested uh, in the U.S., at least in the short term. Now, what helped the numbers out was the fact that Disney opened up 
services in India, which is a massive country, massive population, one billion people over there. Uh, and and though Disney does not break the numbers out for where subscribers are, U.S. versus you know U.K. or Western Europe or, you know, in this case, India or South America, they kind of lump everything together. The only thing you're going to see in the Disney financial reports, the publicly available financial reports, you can get on Disney's website, Disney.com, and then you go to the investor page. You can pull up the report they put out. It's public data because it's a publicly traded company. Uh, they do they do break down Disney Plus from Hulu and from ESPN, or ESPN Plus, I should say. Um so you can see it from that standpoint, but you cannot see the geographic location or the countries of origin of where the subscriber growth happens. And I had read some articles where analysts were basically kind of guessing around. They thought that, you know, out of the 10 million subscribers that have gone up on Disney Plus, uh, you know, 65 or 70 percent of that may have come from India. And I found it interesting that the RPUs or ARPUs, as they call it, which is revenue per unit, uh, which is what they look at, you know, per each subscription, how much money is Disney Plus making? It was very much down from the same time last year. And that was directly due to the impact of the India uh, 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 startup for Disney Plus, which means the bottom line is this. What Disney is basically doing in America, we all just saw Disney Plus subscriptions increase in price. It was basically to cushion the blow of virtually giving away Disney Plus subscriptions in India because you cannot charge the $7 or $8 a month equivalent in rupees in India or whatever they whatever currency they use. I may be wrong on that. I think it's rupees. Uh, you cannot charge the $7 US dollar equivalent in India and get the kind of subscribers that they need over there. That's just a lot of money over there. So basically what you have is countries like the U.S. Uh, subsidizing India's subscriptions for Disney+. Plus. And it, because even on the call, Chapek made the comment or one of the other uh, uh, executives on the call made the comment that if we pulled India out of the ARPUs, the RPUs, the revenues per unit, the RPUs go up sharply by like 25%. So obviously, even that little bit of subscription, 10% of whatever it is of the, of the subscriptions that is India, maybe less, obviously they're charging substantially lower prices over there for Disney Plus that that we as, as U.S. citizens are, are helping to subsidize. Um, so we'll see what happens. I think the Disney Plus subscriptions are going to balloon up again later this year, my guess, as they have more content come out. We don't know how well Loki is going to be received, but right now it looks like you're going to get one or two episodes into Loki, just like Falcon, and I think they're going to have a big drop-off because once Tom Hiddleston is largely out of that show, which is what has been said is going to happen, you're going to get a female version of Loki. I, interest is, is going to wane. It is just going to, to fall off. As we get later into the year and we see the big Star Wars property start to ramp up again, which includes the book of Boba Fett, and then later on you're going to get Mando Season 3, and you're going to get Obi-Wan and the Ahsoka Show, I think you're going to see Disney Plus subscriptions really start to kind of move from that direction. So, keep on the lookout for that. We'll see how that goes. I'll talk more about the 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 pop culture side of that in another video. I want to move on to AT&T because this was fascinating. And this is something, this is AT&T coming out and saying directly to everybody in the public, hey, we made a mistake. We probably shouldn't have bought Warner Media, but we're in it now. So we're going to take some corrective action and we think this will work. And the implications of a move like this cannot be overstated and especially for fans of things like the Snyderverse, uh, this could be, could be, could be huge for you guys and girls out there. Um, so if you're a fan of of that that branch of the DCEU, you just got a new light at the end of the tunnel uh, for going forward. Um it's it's it like I said it cannot be overstated the the what what is going on here so basically how this works or what Warner Media is or excuse me what AT and T is going to do with Warner Media is to take the entire Warner Media subsidiary brand in AT and T spin it off into a separate entity and then once it has been spun off it will merge with Discovery which Discovery has a ton of reality programming, TV, uh, very popular channels. Uh, they have their own streaming service. 
Do not be surprised once that happens. You will see a complete merger of Discovery and HBO Max into a singular conglomerate streaming service, uh, which is yet to be named. It talks about it in the article. So just a few details on that that I think was fascinating. AT&T shareholders will own 71% of this new company, and Discovery shareholders will keep the remaining 29%. AT&T will ultimately reduce its net debt by $43 billion at closing. This is coming from an article in Barron's, which is a very well-respected financial journal publication. Uh, the all-stock deal will be structured, uh, as we just said, a reverse Morris Trust. They'll be spun off first. It's all tax-free stuff, and then they will be combined with Discovery. Uh, the name and ticker symbol of the standalone company are still yet to be determined. Uh, the media giant properties, this is at the end of the merger, uh, HBO Discovery, TNT, TBS, CNN, Food Network, HGTV, plus the HBO Max and Discovery Plus streaming services and the Warner Brothers Film Studio. And that's where it gets interesting, especially for you DC guys out there. Um, and it was kind of funny. Today, this morning, and I'll give a little credit over here, Midnight's Edge uh, had uh, the great Mikey Sutton on. Mikey Sutton is kind of a Hollywood uh, scoop rumor insider. He's got a very good track record for the information that he gets. And while he was on the show today, he he did mention, I, I just, I got real lucky that, that 20, 30 minutes of Mikey Sutton when he was on there, when I got to catch it, he got some breaking news on this. And this is kind of big, is that indeed, um, uh, uh, Ann Sarnoff and, and Walter Hamada, uh, he was getting messages from several people that, you know, supposedly are in the know, um, unnamed sources that they are starting to put the feelers out uh in other words looking for new jobs and walter hamada and sarnoff those are the two that were very much against the snyderverse the 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 head of dceu the head of uh warner brothers studios um there's going to be a lot of change up now let me say this very clearly this is all right now as a proposal this is not a done deal so the way these kind of things works, these companies have to work behind the scenes for a long time. And this has been going on for months, I promise you. They did not just decide to do this last week. These kind of things take a lot of time before they come to daylight, before we see them as the public. And that makes what Warner Brothers did, or AT, what AT&T did, I should say, doing the day and date release of all of their 2020 slate onto HBO Max at the same time they went into the theaters. There was no, they did not give the theaters a window of 30 or 45 days even. It comes out in the theaters and it comes out on HBO Max, same day, same time. It makes a lot more sense now, does it not? Because if you're going to do something like this, you want to try to sweeten the pot as much as you can, and boy, did they ever. Um, now, I, I don't think they're going to be able to do that with Dune because that was not produced by Warner Brothers. They just have distribution rights. Um, so that's going to be a little bit different. Um, but the rest of this, this is, it, it's making what AT&T has done recently make more sense. It also seems to make more sense with what we've kind of seen from the higher ups in Warner Brothers with all the pushback. They don't want to do the Snyderverse. They don't want to do this. Look, the bottom line is this. AT&T is frustrated as hell with Warner Media. They're particularly with Warner Brothers movie studios. They're probably not very happy. Remember, when AT&T started this deal to buy Warner Brothers Studios, they expected to own a blossoming and or revitalizing of a Harry Potter franchise. It didn't really happen, did it? Not there, okay? They also expected to see a new Marvel Cinematic Universe from the DC extended, or the DC Universe. They expected to see the DCEU become the new MCU out of Warner Brothers. That didn't happen either. And all they see going forward is, you know, a, a lot of these Warner Brothers and, and, you know, you look at the CW, what are their show ratings? Batwoman sucks. And, and all, a lot of these, are, a lot of, a lot of their shows kind of suck in terms of the ratings. They're just not getting what they need, guys. They're not getting what they need. So there's a lot that's going to happen here. And uh, I, I think we're going to have to sit tight and wait this still has to get stockholder approval from AT&T. This still has to go through uh, all kind of SEC scrutiny. Uh, this, you know, if there's going to be any challenges on an antitrust side, although I think it'll be, it certainly will be reviewed, but I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to create an antitrust issue, but this will make them 
by the projections in 2023, probably the second largest conglomerate media company behind only Disney, uh, which is going to be big. The number three position will still be held at that point by, you know, theoretically NBC Universal or Comcast. So there's a lot going on right now, guys, with this. Keep an eye on it. Um, you know, it's this is this is something to uh, to look at. But I think, like I said, I think I think this is going to be good news going forward for you know fans of the various Warner Brothers franchises um, because it is going to be Discovery's uh, current CEO that right now is proposed to run the new conglomerate, and I think that's exactly what AT and T wants. They want somebody in there who is a pure business-minded numbers guy. And just like I was saying about the Snyderverse a few weeks ago when all that came out on HBO Max and they put the Snyder Cut, and I said, you know, I hope at and smart enough. They want to make money with this. If they see that there's money to be made with different versions of, 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 of the DC uh, universe, that they could put some on HBO Max, some in the theaters, make everybody happy, make money all the way around, they'll do it. I think the chances of that happening just went way, way, way up. Um, so stay tuned. We're going to keep an eye on this one. You guys take care.